fun one today. We have a monster. This is the Snapmaker A250T we're going to check out. This is going to be something entirely different that I've never played with. Let's put it together. Check out the construction on this thing. This satin finish aluminum is just it's amazing. <laughs> the quality is just crazy. This also bears mention. <laughs> this is the uh, accessories box. And check out the toolbox this comes in. It is a super silky plastic too. Like really, really high quality stuff. I have to say, like it is top of the mark for price point, but it looks like they give us all the things. The tooling they give you is just fantastic. It's really nice screwdriver and really high quality stainless hardware. Pretty content with how things are for the price point. It, it's top of the mark for price, but so far what I'm seeing in quality is, well, looks like it's living up to it. We'll see how it performs, but all this die cast is just beautiful. All die cast aluminum with no rough edges, no flashing. It's, it's actually incredible. Okay, quick catch up to this point. The assembly was beautiful. This thing is impeccably made. I found nothing wrong with the assembly. It's perfect fit and finish in every way. <laughs> the only thing I had trouble with is the screwdriver. All these edges are really, really sharp. That's the only thing. The LCD screen is just like a iPhone 5 or so, maybe a little bit bigger. And it's just beautiful. All aluminum. Everything's aluminum. Assembly is just beautiful in every way. It went together absolutely stunning. I had to rename it and now it wants to calibrate the bed. So this unit has an inductive sensor, direct drive, not Bowden. And these are all lead screws, no belts in this machine. So it's gonna be significantly slower than a belted machine, I think. Looks like it's going to do a nine point. We'll see if we can get any more resolution than that or whether we even need it later on. The steppers are not silent. They definitely make some noise, but the power supply that I've heard of being loud on these is, is whisper quiet, it's no problem. So first time in my life I have seen a 3D printer come with a full size roll of filament. Snapmaker brand, standard PLA, nothing to it. Well, that's pretty easy. Just pop that open and then you can slide it all the way down to the hot end. Snap that back in, we're loaded. I came up temperature about pretty much standard time that my other printers come up. We'll hit load, looks like they tested it with white, no problem. It looks like it's probably set up that you can just push it in and the load would take it through, but rather than miss the alignment of the hole in the bottom of the hot end, I think it's better to pop that cover. Firmware detected, time to do some firmware stuff. Okay, so they actually don't give you anything on the USB drive to test it. That's a, that's a fail and a half. Why would they not give us a single, no G codes ready to go? You can't test it without going through and doing the setup of the slicer and everything. That's, a, that's kind of a complete fail in my mind. Uh, you want to be able to test it and make sure that your setup is as per the factory and that's what the factory g-code does for us it makes sure that uh, you're not far off in your setup than what it should be from factory and yeah now you have two variables well many more than two now we have our slicer where we're going to slice some files and put it on the usb and our machine setup so we don't know what's correct and what could be wrong fail this episode brought to you in part by PCBWay. Check them out at the link below for your next electronics project. They offer competitive rates for all PCBs, parts, and assembly, as well as 24-7 tracking of your order from start to finish. 
Okay, updated firmware without incident. I just downloaded the binary from their website and put it on the USB drive. I did go and download their software and sliced a vase. Oh, cool. We get a nice preview. That's that's cool. Uh, I use basically just the default settings other than I switched it to vase mode. And I'm going to let this go. But in the meantime, I'm going to check the heat up time on this. All right. We hit go. We're leveled. And the printer is away to the races and heating now. So let's see how long it takes to get the bed up to temperature. At a minute and a half, we're up to temp on the nozzle and we're only at 44, 45 C on the bed. So we're just sitting there cooking filament in the nozzle. That's not great. All right, but 346 and we hit 70 and the, the printer is off to the races about one degree before it went ahead. So let's see how this does. I really like the build plate, the Snapmaker flexible build plate that it comes with. So we'll see how it works out. Five hours, 31 minutes, and we're done. These tend to be uh, a little fragile on vase mode. Well, there we go. There's some wispies all over the place, which is a little strange, but other than that, it's a ro it's a really robust vase mode, but that's probably partly the design. Feels good, looks good, but how are the layers? Only one way to find out. Holy smokes, check that out. Wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, I finally cracked it somewhere. There, cracked it right there. Oh. That's, that's, that's not even breaking at the layer lines. That's just shattering. Look at that. See, it's just shattered. Uh, okay. That is, so that was fast speed, medium quality and uh, medium strength. Uh, there was light, medium and heavy. And wow. Holy. there and again it didn't shatter at, uh, at the layer lines at all it shattered almost perpendicular to them that that's impressive okay uh i thought this thing was going to be kind of a joke for a 3d printer uh because this is a, a three in one um let's try a production piece wow holy smokes Okay, we'll try some TPU this time and give it one last go here and see how we make out. Okay, first try with TPU, complete fail. Whether it's stripped in the hot end, but there's no TPU coming out, just a few little wisps no good. And there's our problem. Our filament is indeed out of position and popped out. So it stopped feeding. It's right off the hub gear. So not good. Also, when the printer finishes, uh, it homes at the top. It goes to rest at the top here, which causes the filament to flop off the roll, which is marginally annoying. I'll manually feed a bunch of TPU through this. I hit load. No problem, we're loading through steady stream of TPU. We'll pop this off, take a look. Not doubled back, everything is fine. We'll do one more load. Hit load again, let that howl, and we'll make sure that we get the correct amount out of it. Hmm, it stopped. What do you want to bet? That's out of position. Wait till I don't hear it anymore. I don't. Yep, turn off. Even the load process goes way too fast. And that's just me hitting load on here. So 
their load is no good for TPU. Uh, you can't use it. They need to slow that down. That's way too fast and it buckled out of position with this closed. This is not looking great. I am not impressed. I'm gonna mess around and I'll see if I can get this thing to print TPU yet. I'm gonna try. Okay, let's review the results here. This is from the Snapmaker. This is from Ender 3 V2. Off printer, the top, the dimensionality is fine. Uh, it's got a bit of a matte finish because it gets this white chalky texture from the build plate. Other than that, it worked good, but there are some missed extrusions here, whether there was partial clogs because of filament problem. It is their filament. Uh, the top side as printed is not bad. Uh, no complaints there. This is Ender 3 V2 with my Prusa slicer. Uh, I think this is superior and I definitely like this build plate better. So I asked them for a Prusa Slicer profile and they said they didn't have one or wouldn't give one either way. This is the bottom as printed on the Snapmaker. Outside, not bad. Um, pretty decent. The support material came out beautifully. But then we move to the inside and this side is incredibly bumpy. There is just horrendous banding here like these are over a mil deep they're really really deep and it starts it's affected the entire length but the backside is horrible and then it's all chewed up here so i'm assuming one of the rods is bent one of the lead screws is bent or i can't see any other reason than this like either the X is changing at this side. If there's backlash in the X, maybe that's doing it, but there's nothing on this side. Or the Y is walking. Um, with this lead screw tech, it wouldn't take much to have that happen, I guess. But then there's this weird banding at the top too, which is pretty bad. A no-go for me. Build plate surface is just fine other than it picked up whatever was printed before that their, their test print must have been round that's why i don't like these build plates that leave this chalky appearance if you look at what comes off the ender 3 v2 beautiful this is my own prusa slicer profile no tuning this is you guys saw it in the video uh, i took no time to build none of that nasty banding no problem at all and the support material also comes out just beautifully but Let's check out the TPU results. This is from the Neptune 3, and this is from the Snapmaker with their profile. It's a mess. That is not great. So pulling the sport material out, it came out no problem. Actually, the sport, the sport material is just beautiful. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's actually better than the main print. What a mess. Uh, their, their default profile is just no bueno. This is right off the Neptune. And there's the results. This is my own Prusa Slicer profile that I did no tuning. Basically, I took a PLA profile, slowed it down a little bit. And these are the results that I get on both the Ender 3 V2 or the Neptune. The proof is in the pudding here. This is nowhere near something that I could put out in Scent VR. The outside surface is not horrible. The top is not horrible. The stringing mess, no good. As delivered, the TPU profile, unusable. I have to give Snapmaker the ultimate props for their instruction manual. This is by far the instruction manual to rule all instruction manuals. It is absolutely gorgeous. Well laid out. It has all the safety items, specifications, everything in a really logical flow. 
video tutorial information, beautiful photography, and beautiful assembly drawings. This is the Cadillac of instructions by far. So 3D printing for production, something I know a little about, and I have to say, I can't recommend the Snapmaker. Uh, not as delivered and as it performs for me. It's just not great. We can test the CNC and the laser, but with that amount of backlash and that amount of trouble in the 3D print, the CNC is not going to perform well. So we'll, we'll try it anyway in a future video, but if I was to buy that with that amount of money uh, and that was delivered to me, I'd be livid. You may not be like me in printing for production, or maybe you are. Something like that you would think it looks really, it looks really good for an industrial look. It looks like it plays the part of something that you'd mass produce things with. It definitely is as delivered it just doesn't do the business I can't recommend it uh, I think maybe maybe in the future they can fix it up but the Ender 3 V2 Neo that I reviewed or the Neptune beautiful printers wonderful results absolutely stellar results on my scent VRs just beautiful uh, and the Snapmaker not so much it was nice to play with it it was nice to give it a try but unfortunately it's definitely a no-go for me cheers guys